Hi friends, this is the generation of technology. So we at IR Commerce Classes decided why not use technology for the sake of studies, for the benefit of students. So we have compiled all the critical points, the basics of every chapter, rather the most important chapters at one place in the form of a mobile app, which you can listen to it whenever you want at your convenience, without requiring Wi-Fi, no internet required, no 3G, no 4G. You just have to download in your mobile and listen to it at your convenience. My advice, listen to all the chapters at least thrice a day till your day of the exam and I am definitely sure you will be able to remember all the critical points during the examination. So friends, Take this mobile app, use it and score maximum marks in your examination. Wish you all the best. Friends, let us start with labor cost. Three types of questions can be asked. Number one, computation of net wages payable. You will start with wages, dearness allowance, bonus, overtime, all put together you get what is called gross wages, then deductions, less employees contribution to provident fund, less employees contribution to ESIC, less TDS, profession tax, etc. The final amount is the amount which we pay to the employees, this is called net wages payable. Second, competition of labor cost or employee cost or wages cost. Competition of labor cost or employee cost or wages cost. You will start with gross wages. Here you will add employer's contribution to provident fund. Again you will add employer's contribution to employee state insurance corporation. Total wages. Next. Effective rate per hour. The question will ask you to calculate the rate per hour. Formula will be total wages upon effective hours. Formula will be total wages or total labor cost upon effective hours. You will get the rate per hour. How to calculate effective hours? Formula total hours minus normal idle hours. Total hours, hours minus normal idle hours, you will get effective hours. Now we come to the second part of labor costing that is calculation of labor remuneration. There are various methods of calculation of labor remuneration. Number one, time rate system where the wages are paid on the basis of number of hours worked. Formula will be actual hours and the normal rate per hour. So time rate system formula will be actual hours and the normal rate per hour. Second, piece rate system divided to three parts. First one, straight piece rate system where the wages are paid on the basis of units produced. Formula, units produced into normal rate per unit. So straight piece rate system, units produced into normal rate per unit. Then we have Taylor's differential piece rate system. Step number one, calculate normal rate per unit. Calculate standard units. Now you will compare the units produced with the standard units. If units produced is less than standard, then wages will be units produced in the normal rate per unit into 80% and if units produced is equal to or more than standard, the wages will be units produced in the normal rate per unit into 120%. So there are two categories as per Taylor's plan. If the actual units produced is less than standard, 
units produced in the normal rate per unit into 80% only. And if the units produced is more than standard or even equal to standard, units produced in the normal rate per unit into 120%. Merrick's differential piece rate system. Step number one, calculate normal rate per unit. Step number two, calculate standard units. Number three, you have to do one more calculation that is called level of efficiency. Formula will be units produced upon standard units into 100. You will get the answer in percentage. Units produced upon standard units into 100 equal to percentage. Now you will compare the level of efficiency. If the level of efficiency is up to 83%, then wages will be units produced at a normal rate per unit into 100%. If the level of efficiency is more than 83%, up to 100%, wages will be units produced at the normal rate per unit into 110%. And if the level of efficiency is above 100%, he will get wages, units produced at the normal rate per unit into 120%. So here we are having three categories, up to 83%, above 83%, up to 100% and above 100%. In the first case, units produced at the normal rate per unit into 100%. Second case, units produced at the normal rate per unit into 110%. And the third case, units produced in the normal rate per unit into 120%. Now we come to the third part of labor costing. That is calculation of bonus plans. Halse bonus plan. Step number one. Calculate normal rate per hour. Step number two. Calculate standard time. Number three. Calculate actual time which is normally given the problem. Wages is equal to actual time in the normal rate per hour plus bonus time saved in the normal rate per hour into 50%. Wages will be given by actual time in the normal rate per hour plus bonus time saved in the normal rate per hour into 50%. Second bonus plan which is called row 1 bonus plan. Calculate normal rate per hour. Number 2. Calculate standard time. Number 3. Calculate actual time which is given in the problem. Number 4. Wages is given by actual time in the normal rate per hour plus bonus of time saved in the normal rate per hour into actual time upon standard time. I repeat, wages it will be given by actual time in the normal rate per hour plus time saved plus normal rate per hour in the actual time upon standard time. Gantt task bonus plan. Step number one, calculate normal rate per hour. Number two, calculate standard units. If actual units produced is below standard, then wages will be actual hours in the normal rate per hour. If units produced is equal to standard, wages will be actual hours in the normal rate per hour plus 20%. If units produced is above standard, then wages will be units produced into high piece rate which will be given in the problem. Thank you.